Yay, I'm live. Hi, cat. Hi, grasshopper. Hi, trash cat. And I know Chevy le left already. And Frank stopped by and said hi. And Andrew stopped by and said hi. Hopefully, he'll come back later. And we'll see how many people show up once we get going here. So how's everybody? I'm like able to talk better. I still got like a little bit of red around my eyes, but it's not anywhere near as bad as it was. I chew. So it's been a couple weeks of no streams because my, I think it's just allergies have been killing me. The pollen count is high. The camera is better. Yeah, I did some like turn twisting and turning and stuff. And I think I got it a little bit sharper. Um, I just finished a little drawing that I don't have a photograph of yet, but I'll show you guys real quick. Do, 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 do. Can you tell what it is? It's my latest butt picture. I'll take a picture of it tomorrow. It's a bee butt, yep. A butt bee. So, I'll show you what other pictures I have. And I'll show them again later as well if a few more people come in. I haven't streamed for so long. Maybe nobody will show up tonight because they think I died. Everybody might think that I totally, like, am dead. Let me see what I got here. Okay, we got a blue butterfly. And we have the buffalo. We've always got the buffalo. He's been around for a while. And a, um, how do you pronounce that? Corm Cormador or, you know, those little water birds. They dive and then they, um, They'll sit on the pilings and, oops, I shouldn't have hit that quite yet. They'll sit on the pilings and stretch their wings out and dry their wings off, which is what he's doing. And then, there's a female um, wood duck and a little sparrow, which is card. Butterfly, a swallowtail butterfly, a squirrel. And a toad. Stop sharing. Okay. This didn't work, so I'll hit it again. Lots of spring animals. Yes, it is spring, although tomorrow it's going to snow again. I told everybody you died. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yes, everybody, I'm sure, believes that. <laughs> uh, we only have four people in here right now, which, like I say, I think that's part of like me not streaming forever. But we'll do it again in a couple days, see what happens. I've got lots of... Um, Lots of um, do 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 time on my stream yard because I haven't been streaming. And I got flies in the house because it was like up to 70 degrees. And I opened up the door and now I'm like fighting the stupid little gnats and flies from spring. Can you believe that? It was up to 70 degrees and then the next day it was 32 degrees with. 80 mile an hour winds <laughs> and today it got up to 40 but tomorrow it's only going to get up in the in the 30s and it's supposed to maybe snow so yep wyoming spring next month finances should be better yep 
yeah, the big change in weather. And the wind kind of helps with the pollen count, I think, because it's been windy the last few days and my eyes and stuff have started to clear up. But even when it when there was snow on the ground, it was still like um, the weather warning on the bottom of my computer screen where it says, like right now, it says 30 degrees and cloudy. It had like in red, it said a high pollen count. So <coughs> but the last couple of days, it's been okay. So that's what's been going on with me. Just the usual being sick. If anybody wants to come up and say hi, the link is posted. Like I say, we may end up by ourselves tonight. But I used to stream by myself all the time, but I'm just not used to it anymore. So I get a little bit self-conscious, but I can still do it. I can do it. Um, according to... To mine, it says three people, which is pretty sad. Four people, which would be cat and grasshopper, trash cat, chew. I have not talked to Blackie for like a week. And um, I haven't talked to Sarah for quite a while. The last time that I talked to, um, to Blackie was... Um, well, maybe two or three days ago, they had a big, um, thing going on in Sydney where some guy went into a mall and started stabbing people and he killed six people and then, and wounded a bunch of others. And then the, the police arrived and shot him and he was telling me about it. And that was the, the last I talked to him. That was a couple days ago. But I haven't talked to him at all today. And I posted that I was streaming tonight, but he hasn't answered or or anything. So he might not show up. That's okay. So what do you guys want to talk about? Since it's so slow, we could talk about anything. Anything, anything, anything. I don't think, I think most of the people in here probably have not heard about um, the reason why I don't talk to my younger brother. My younger brother is the only person in my immediate family left, but I haven't spoken to him for at least 20 years, and I probably never will again. The couple times he's tried to get a hold of me, I've just, like, blocked him. So he's blocked on everything. And if anybody wants to hear that story, it's got a few funny parts and a few parts that'll make you, like, want to scream. Oh, that's cool, cat. I hope you have fun. So I could tell that story, which will take me a while. And like I say, it's got it's got a little bit of revenge, but but also tells how he's like screwed me over. So yeah. <laughs> Please do. Do you want to hear about my brother? Has anybody in here heard about my brother before? Mm -mm. Okay, so I have or had a brother whose name is Steve, and he is a year younger than me. And for some reason, and I'm, I'm not like, I'm being totally honest, I'm not telling it with any prejudice or anything, but Steve always, from the time that we were kids, yep, your Uncle Steve, except everybody in my family has disowned him. All my kids have disowned him, too. But from the time when we were kids, all he ever really thought about was money. And he was, like, determined that he was going to be a millionaire by the time he was 
like 25 years old and da 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 and um he was also the golden child i mean like when i graduated a year before him my parents told me it would be a waste of money for me to go to college even though i had like a scholarship for some books from the art club and stuff but they told me it'd be a waste of time so i i didn't get to go to college but um and then there was stuff like like um for my birthday one year i used to go bike riding with my friend tj whom you guys will know and um, we used to ride her she had two bikes she had an old old bike and a, a new one that she'd gotten for her birthday or something so i would ride her old bike and we'd go bike riding all the time well for my birthday i wanted a bike for my birthday and i asked my parents if i could get a bike for my birthday and they told me my birthday's like at the end of june and they told me that they didn't have enough money and i can totally get that i mean it's okay i understand that so i was okay with it so i got like a pair of shorts and a t-shirt for my birthday so september is my younger brother's birthday and he fucking got a bike <laughs> and i walked out in the garage after he got his bike and he was out in the garage crying because he had never ridden a bike before and didn't know how to ride a bike and he was afraid that my dad was going to get mad at him because he didn't know how to ride it so that's kind of how my childhood went he always got everything but it was no big deal but anyway so i was living in um in california that was when i was working at disneyland and i wanted out of there and i wanted to get megan out of there because i didn't want to raise her in la with all the homeboys and the drugs and shit that that my ex had going on so um my brother called me up and asked me um if i wanted to move to texas because he had gotten married to this gal from texas he was a truck driver and he had gotten married and they bought a new house and they wanted to rent out her old house. And um, he wanted to know if I wanted to leave LA and I was like, yes, I want to get out the hell out of here. So um, the drugs and boys are the best part, yeah. Like the homeboys that would come over in the middle of the night and ask my ex to hook them up. Uh-huh, we know about that shit. <laughs> but anyway, Yes, I definitely wanted to get out of L.A. and get away from him. So, and my brother, like, offered me this house to rent for um, $250 a month. So, I slowly got everything that I wanted to keep moved over to a storage unit. And then just a few things in the house that I couldn't take without causing suspicion. So, my brother got a truck in Oregon. And, um... Hi, Arthur. So my brother got a truck in Oregon and then he swung through LA and picked up me and my stuff. And um, yeah, that was fun times. That was good times. We were, we like got the stuff out of the house and went over to the storage unit. And the owner of the storage unit came out and talked to me and he said, um, I have something to tell you. And I was like, okay. So I went over to his desk to talk to him. And I had always paid with um, cash for the storage unit. And that month, it was only a partial payment, like because it was like the first of the month when I was getting everything out of there. So I just paid for a week of storage. And he had hired somebody new, and they had run the full storage bill on my credit card because I'd use that to make the partial payment on my debit card. So, and that was $250 a month. So he couldn't do anything about it because it was too late to cancel it. So we called the bank together and they canceled my debit card and said that, you know, they canceled the, the payment and, you know, do all that good stuff. So there I was moving to Texas with no debit card and no, no money because my paycheck from Disneyland had been automatically deposited. <laughs> And my bank was, my account was basically frozen. But anyway, so I got to Texas and 
on the way to Texas when we, we stopped and had coffee. And my brother told me that him and Donna, his wife, had talked about it. And I, I mean, this is like after he picked up all my, my stuff and me, and there was no going back. All my stuff was in the back of the of the um, truck. And he told me that um, they talked it over and decided that they wanted five hundred dollars a month for the house. It's like, well, that's just fucking great. Now it's too late for me to back out. And they tell me on the way to Texas, so that was cute. And I knew that my brother never did anything without having something to um, some way it was going to like benefit him. So the whole moving me was not to help me out. It was to benefit him because he wanted to run out the house while he tried to sell it. So I got the Texas and all that good stuff. And I had um, a small like my vacation checks. I had a week's vacation coming. So I had that. And if you ever try to cash a check from Disneyland in Texas, it was very difficult to find a place to cash it for me. They looked at me like I was out of my mind. <laughs> so that was funny. But anyway, eventually the money situation got straightened out. I got a job. I was like, I worked as a secretary for a um, quarter horse farm. So, and I shipped out horse, frozen horse semen all over the world. So if you guys ever wanted to like tease me about shipping semen, you can do that. But anyway, after the main shipping season was over and stuff, I got laid off. So, um, I found another job right away, which was as a, um, head cook at a school. And, um, but it didn't start until August and this was like July. So, but I was a month ahead in the rent. So I wasn't like super worried about it. I was just trying to find a temporary job, but my brother found out that I was out of work and he came over and screamed and yelled that I was going to try to cheat him out of rent and on and on and on. He kept going on and on and on. And, um, Oh, I forgot one thing. His wife called me one day because my brother had stopped to have coffee with me. And as soon as my brother walked out the door, he was still driving truck at the time. And he was on his way home and stopped to have coffee with me. And his wife, Donna, called me and started screaming at me like a sailor. Like you wouldn't believe the stuff that was coming out of her mouth. And she was accusing me of trying to steal my brother from her. And I was like, okay. So, <laughs> yeah, that was interesting. But anyway, he threw a fit and they basically told me that I had to get out because I was going to try to cheat him out of money and da 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 da. And I was like, okay, whatever. So, um, I know, good Lord. So, um, Anyway, I was upset, but not super mad at him because that was just typical Steve. But then he told me that he would give me back the extra month's worth of rent if I didn't destroy his house as I moved out. And that upset me because this was my brother thinking that I would destroy a house as I moved out. I was so appalled that he would say something like that. That was like one step too far for me. So I told him that I would leave the house and he could keep the fucking money because that's all that mattered to him. But the minute that I walked out the door, he was no longer my brother. And I totally meant it. I totally meant it. So that was when I moved to Cape Cod because I had a friend in Cape Cod that said that I could stay with him while I looked for work and a place to live. So, um, so I did, I put my stuff in storage and loaded up what I could cram into the car and me and Megan moved to Cape Cod and I've been on Cape Cod for about six months or so and, um, maybe even a year, but I'd heard through the grapevine, mostly my, my older sister who's passed away now, but she was living in Pennsylvania. 
and she told me that Steve and Donna had moved to sold their house and moved to um, Colorado. So my sister called me up one day, and she said that Steve had called her and told her that he really, really, really missed me and wanted to make up, and he loved me so much and all this stuff. So she had given him my phone number. And I was like, oh, shit, what does he want? Well, then she told me that he had, um, he was coming to see her, and she was quite excited about it because he had bought a dump truck in, um, in North Carolina. So uh, he was going to fly in and pick up the dump truck and then um, drive it home. So he was going to stop at her house on the way and spend a night with her. So she was excited about it. And I was sitting there thinking about it, and I was like, he was going to fly into um, – Rhode Island, which, if you don't know, is only like an hour's, Providence, Rhode Island is an hour's drive from Cape Cod. And I was like, he needs a ride from the airport to the dump truck, and that's why he's going to call me. Because <laughs> I'm not stupid, and I knew exactly that that was it, because he doesn't, he doesn't really care about anybody. So... Sure enough, a few days later, the phone rang and I answered it, and it was Donna. And she said, Pam, Pam, with her Texas out, out accent, you know. And she says, do you have time to talk? And it ran through my mind, like, what am I going to do to just get her off the phone, you know, politely? And then I thought, what? Well, I don't have to be polite because they treated me like shit. And she called me all kinds of names and accused me of wanting my brother. So I said, I'm sorry, you have the wrong number. And hung up, <laughs> hung up the phone and that was that. So then um, after my brother had flown in and he had to, I guess he had to rent a car and drive down to um, pick up the dump truck, which I'm sure he was quite upset about that because he didn't like spending, he doesn't like spending money. He, he values his money a lot. So he picked up the dump truck and he um, stopped at my sister's house on the way home with it. Well, the dump truck broke down and he had to take it to the shop and he stayed with my sister for like, he ended up staying with my sister for almost a week while they fixed the dump truck. So um, my sister said that every night Donna would call him. And he would take the phone out onto her porch and she said you could hear clear through the door and everything. Donna screaming at him that she knew that he didn't, that dump truck wasn't broken down and he had a girlfriend there and, you know, all blah, 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 because that woman was jealous. <laughs> and like, I mean, obviously she was jealous or she wouldn't have accused me of trying to steal my own brother, for God's sakes. So, yeah, she definitely had a jealousy problem. So I thought that was pretty funny. And then I guess on the way back to call after he left my sister's house on the way back to Colorado, it broke down two more times and he ended up renting a truck and a trailer and just towing it home to fix it. So, ha, huh, that didn't work out too well for him. But anyway, so that happened and um, I hadn't heard anything from my brother for a while. Well, meanwhile, my mom was getting old and she had macular degenerate disease, so she was losing her eyesight. And my sister's daughter, yeah, she she was totally totally psycho, Alec, totally psycho. So um, anyway, so my sister's daughter lived with my mom and took care of her. But the thing about Bobby Joe, my my niece, is Bobby Joe had a bit of a temper, and everybody knew it. So, this was all pre-planned. I mean, there's no doubt this was pre-planned. Donna flew in, said she was coming to visit my mom. And she flew in for, she was supposed to stay just a, like a week or something. So, Donna had flown in. And then, after she'd been there a couple days, um, my sister called Bobby Joe. 
gets to, to visit with her. And Bobby Joe was talking on her cell phone. And Donna said, who are you talking to? And Bobby Joe said, my mom. And Donna said, that stupid bitch. And Bobby Joe threw the phone at her. And instantly, Donna got on the phone and was screaming, she's attacking me. She's attacking me. Come get her. Come get her. I'm scared of her. Well, she had already like talked to the police when she got to town and said she was scared of Bobby Joe. So if she got if she got attacked or anything, she'd be calling him. She set it up. They both set it up. So they got Bobby Joe taken out of the house and put a restraining order on her. And then my brother flew in. And unbeknownst to the rest of us, he got power of attorney. He got her to sign him sign him over power of attorney. And she had taken him off the, out of the will like years ago. It was supposed to be divided up. The house was supposed to be divided up between, uh, and whatever she had was supposed to be divided up between me and my sister and my older brother. But she had taken Steve off the will. The reason being is that he gambled all the time and she'd already loaned him like forty or $50,000 and never gotten any of it back. So um, she'd taken him out of the will because she figured he already had his his deal. That's right, Thomas. Uh, and hello. So anyway, so they set it up to where he got power of attorney and instantly like put the house up for sale and stuff. So I was working at a real estate place and I called up my, my aunt was going to go visit my mom, her sister, my aunt Faith, my favorite aunt. And um, she was going to go visit my mom. And I told her to talk to mom about getting, um, because Bobby Joe was like out of the house and couldn't come back and she couldn't take care of herself. So I told her to tell mom to get a reverse mortgage and hire somebody to come in a couple, couple days a week and take care of her. So my aunt went to visit her and to tell her that. And when she walked in the house, this is going to sound a little bit familiar. She walked in the house and sat down and started talking to my mom and Donna, started screaming into her phone she's here she's here come get her out of the house so the police showed up and drug my aunt my 80 year old aunt out of the house and they apologized to her they said they had no choice because of the power of attorney thing but yeah they planned that too so that my aunt didn't have a chance to talk to my mom at all and my aunt was totally humiliated because she was retired from the police force in tacoma so she was extremely embarrassed and stuff, and it just pissed me off. And that was like one step too far for me. And, I, and she said Steve was there. He'd flown in, and he was like peeking out of the curtains at the police, you know, taking her out of there. So anyway, so I was kind of upset about that. So here's where the little bit of, of payback comes in. So I couldn't, I didn't have the money to fly there and do anything about it. Couldn't do anything because I couldn't talk to my mom because every time I called, <coughs> Donna would answer the phone and hang up when she realized it was me. So, yeah. So I couldn't even talk to my mom. So, and Steve was selling the house and the uh, um, old, old um, like, seniors protection service had to, um, they went over and told Steve that he had better be taking my mom home with him or they would put him in jail before he got across the border. That's what kind of person he was. So anyway, so what I did was I was talking to my son Tucker on the phone and updating him with what was going on and what I knew. And I told him there really wasn't anything that I could do. And I told him, I said, but I wonder what would happen if a woman called the house, cause like Donna was guarding the phone she always answered the phone. I said, what would happen if a woman called the house and asked for Stevie? And if she said, who's this? Just say, well, who's this? And if she says it's his wife, then say, oh, and hey, just hang up. But I said, make sure you use a pay phone because you don't want to have a traceable number <laughs> cause she will call back. <laughs> So, yeah. So, Tucker said, done, because he had a lot of friends in the Portland area. So, yep, done deal. 
So my um my older brother told me that um he was talking to mom on the phone because they let him talk to her. And she heard like Donna was screaming in the background like a banshee <laughs> at my brother. <laughs> and I thought, well, you know, that's it. Hi, Merritt. So um, yeah, so the gift that keeps on giving because you know every time that she got mad at him or got a little bit drunk she was going to accuse him of having a girlfriend in portland <laughs> so that was like i could say he got away with selling everything and taking my inheritance and stuff but at least i did get him back a little bit and knowing donna it was pure hell <laughs> i mean that's what makes it so funny is that she was like a little bit bat shit crazy so yeah i know it was just absolutely pure hell <laughs> i'm so bad but it was fun it makes me smile whenever i think about it <laughs> uh, how many siblings do you do i have well um i had my older brother bill who um died of covid covid um in 2020 in the spring and my sister, who basically drank herself to death, um, about the same time this was all going on with my brother and my mom and stuff, she passed away when she was like 54. So I had my older brother and my older sister, and then me, and then my younger brother, Steve, whom I don't talk to anymore. So basically, right now, I don't have any siblings. So, yeah. So that was a story about my brother. I could have added like all kinds of stuff in there, but you, you get the gist of it. So since then, one time um, Donna found me on Facebook about a year ago and she like sent me a message and said something about, oh, um, she said hello and she said, I see the, the rumors about you having passed away are slightly exaggerated. And I said, yeah. And she says, well, when you have time, can I, can I talk to you? And I thought about it a minute. And I said, I don't really have anything to say to you. And I blocked her. And that was the last time I heard about them. Heard from them. So they're basically pretty well blocked. So I know I missed you guys because, I mean, it's been like... Um, two weeks and i don't i don't actually like talk talk to anybody so it's like i message my kids and a few other people but you know i have like met them on messenger but as far as actually talking to people i don't so yeah so anyway that's a story about my family <laughs> uh. So, of my kids, I have um, Tucker, he's my oldest, or no, he's not, Jessica's my oldest. Jessica is my oldest, and then Tucker, and then um, Courtney, and then Megan, who is now Nathan. So, if you hear me talking a little bit, I'm not sure how what the correct thing is to say is because if i tell stories about when megan was growing up i kind of have to call her megan for a lot of the stories because they don't make sense if i call him nathan but nathan is his name now so i'm not sure quite what to do when i'm when i tell stories about the past hi silver creek Yeah, Megan would be the dead name, but what about when I'm talking about in the past when she was growing up, he was growing up? Do I say Nathan or do I say Megan? That is the question because I don't understand all the, the nuances of what's right and what's wrong with that. But anyway, I will show the art that I have for sale again. We have a bee butt, which I don't have a photograph of yet, which is why I'm holding it up. 
We have a butt. It's a minefield, yes. So B butt. Oh, and I have Sam too. Sam's my son too. We mustn't forget Sam. And then I shall hang on. I'll like the other ones I have photographs of, so I'll show them real quick. Let me share screen. And that one. And this one. Okay. So that is, I call this one Told You So. And it is a um, ACEO card, which the bids on them start at 20 bucks. And yeah, that's, that's the Toad. Then I have this one, the squirrel, which that's a bad photograph of it, but I did like watercolor in the background and then did the squirrel, squirrel and colored pencil. And he is um, four by six with in a five by seven mat. So he'd be able to, you'd be able to drop him into a, um, a five by seven frame. And the starting bid on that size is $60. And that is a swallowtail, and it is also a little ACEO card. So the opening bid on them is 20 bucks. And then we have a sparrow, which, like say, the opening bid is 20 bucks on them. And a female wood duck, um, 20 bucks opening bid, but I might give her away, if, like, either today, tonight or tomorrow. We'll see. I might do a giveaway on that one. And then we have, um, oh, what do you call these guys? Help me out here. I know what it is, but my mind just went blankety blank. A cormidor cor cor or something like that. They're a water bird. And they dive and, and fish, and then they'll get out, and they'll, like, sit on the piers and, like, spread their wings out to dry off and that one is a four by six matted to a actually it's a little bit bigger than four by six but i'm going to mat it i haven't matted that one yet but it's going to go on to a five by seven so it can be a framed with a five by seven and of course the buffalo that is an eight by ten And the blue butterfly, which is another ACEO card. So that's what I have tonight, which is nine pieces all together. So let me go back to here. Comorant. Yep, Comorant. What is the reserve on the squirrel? The reserve on that is $60. It's a, a four by six matted to a five by seven. So that's what I have. Welcome back, cat. So what do you want to hear about now? I could tell you some stories from Texas. Your phone says 10. Well, let's see how many people it says in here. Hey, Boots Cats. How are you? Yep, all my exes live in hexes. <laughs> oh, I decided. Um, I decided when I moved to Texas that I was not gonna name. I was not gonna date anybody nicknamed Bubba or anybody with like three names like Jimmy, Bo, Bob, or anything like that. So 
basically, I didn't date anybody when I lived in Texas. <laughs> uh, because everybody there is named Bubba or has three or four names and um, and drives a pickup with rifles in the back window. Hi, TJ. Speak of the devil, yes. I was telling everybody earlier how we used to um, go on bike rides. I almost forgot I have this. I can open up this. And this is from Dee Dee. So everybody probably is going to know what it is because Dee Dee sends me one of these little care packages like every six months or so. So, but I'm going to open it up. I'm going to open it up. Anybody got any guesses what it is? Yeah, we're going to do an unboxing. And TJ sent me a message saying, who will be streaming with you? Well, it looks like nobody because nobody's like said anything. So <laughs> and nobody's shown up. So yeah, everybody must be busy tonight where everybody thinks that I passed away. It's been so long. Um, okay, I'm cutting open the top of this box. We're going to do a grand unboxing of my care package from Dee Dee. Like I say, I, I know what it is because she sends me one, one of these boxes like every six months or so. I think the last one she sent was about six months ago. Gotta love Dee Dee. Uh, uh, I don't want to slice open what it is, so I gotta be careful here. Okay, there we go. Got it open. Uh -huh. Looks packed pretty tight. And what we have is doo -doo -doo -doo. coffee. <laughs> oh, the hell's it up upside down? Pete's Coffee Dark Roast. Major Dickinson's Blend. I don't think I've had that one before. And we've got a another one. And we've got a house blend. And a Italian roast and another house blend and I've had this sitting for a while and it was really hard not to break it open but I wanted to make sure that I did an unboxing while I was online. Another Italian roast. And another Major Dickinson's blend. And another Italian roast. Uh, we're almost down to the bottom. And Italian roast. Running out of room to stack them. And that's fun. Italian roast. So well, that is Dee Dee feeding my addiction. Canestio Valley Cichlids. Hello. 
a three-day weekend. Yep. <laughs> uh, nice haul, I know, huh? Packing everything back in here. So thank you, Dee Dee. Oh, I know what else I needed to say. I've got, I took one load of stuff to the post office, but I couldn't send everything because, um, you know, my truck isn't running, so I'd take a taxi. And the taxi charges you. Look out. But I'm not, oh, move out of the way. So the taxi charges you, um, when, like, if they wait for you, out, they wait for five minutes, and then they start charging you $5 a minute. So I divided it into two trips. And then I got sick, so I still have the second trip sitting here, but I'm going to try to get it in the morning. Because I want to have everything finished sending. Live in New York. All right. So, um, so anyway, that's what's going on with that. And what was I going to say about it? I forgot. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so that's what's going on with that. And I'm glad that I'm not sick anymore. So hopefully that's it for this spring. And I can get over my allergies till I start spraying for mosquitoes again. You're from Texas. I used to live in Texas above Dallas in a little town and I forget the name of the town my mind just went blank but anyway a little town in between like halfway between Denison and Sheridan Tioga that's where I used to live for like a year it was Tioga Texas And everything in Texas either stings, bites, or has thorns. And it's muggier than shit and hotter than shit. <laughs> yeah, I went down to um, Dallas Fort Worth one time to take my daughter to the, or my son. I don't know which is correct to the zoo <laughs> in Fort Worth. I remember my kids asked me, um, they asked me what Texas was like, and I said, well, it's different. I said that Texas sky is totally different. It's hard to describe, but like when it rains there, you can't see shit. And um, and then I had gone to Sheridan for some groceries and stuff, and I was on my way back home on the freeway. And I looked up ahead of me, and the like the siren started going off on the radio, the warning siren. And um, they said that a tornado had just touched down on Pilot Rock, which is just a little ways a little ways south of the town that I lived in, Tioga, about five miles from there. So, but anyway, I was looking at the sky and seeing the, the funnel clouds, a couple different funnel, funnel clouds forming and stuff. And I was going, that's what I'm talking about, the sky being different than Oregon. <laughs> <coughs> you live in a part of New York with more cows and people, and two hours south of Buffalo. That's really pretty country I've driven through there. Um, I live in Wyoming, which the whole state of Wyoming has more cows than people. I know it's, I think everybody thought I died because it's been like two weeks since I last streamed because I haven't been feeling good, but that's okay. And there's probably someone else streaming too, because there, there has been almost every night that I try to stream. You were south of Dallas, about four hours south. Okay. 
what part of Wyoming? I live in Laramie, which is southeastern Wyoming. Um, it's west of Cheyenne. The third biggest city in Wyoming with the 30, a little bit over 30,000 people. Ninety two degrees. Oh my god, yeah, I know it was like when I like left Cape Cod and swung through Texas to pick up my stuff out of the storage unit that I'd left there. It was it was in June, like the end of June, and it was a hundred and twenty degrees. And I'm not even kidding. It was a hundred and twenty degrees. And the storage unit was so hot that we couldn't even unload the stuff. We went and talked to the people. They usually closed the doors at 9, and they left it open for us, left the gates open for us so that we could go in after dark to load everything up. It is hot there. And where I was, there was tornadoes and shit because we weren't that far from Oklahoma City. We were definitely in the tornado alley, but you couldn't, like... People didn't have basements or anything because if you stuck a shovel in the ground the next day, it would be full of water. So there was no basements. And muggier than shit when it was hot. But anyway, I totally forgot what I was talking about. But I don't know. What should I talk about, guys? It's going to be 80 degrees all next week. I think we're getting up to 60. Yeah, the cicadas are, they're supposed to be like two different, two different types of them that are hatching out at the same time this year. So you're going to get like, people are going to get double slammed with them. And it only happens like once every hundred years or something like that where they both hatch out at the same time, both kinds, so yeah. Fish or my art? Fish or your art? Well, I guess I can show you my art. I'll show everybody my art one more time. Oh, first I'll show you the one that I don't have a photograph of yet, which is a bee butt. And I don't have a photograph of it yet, so I can't show it real good because, you know, webcam. But I have photographs of the other ones. So we have a blue butterfly. This is the ACEO card, which is two and a half by three and a half, which is the same size as the B. And if anybody's interested in any of them, the opening bid is 20 bucks on them. And we have the Buffalo, which is an eight by 10. And the opening bid on that is 145, I guess. I don't know. Somewhere in there. And it is um, colored pencil on a piece of papyrus paper. And then we have the, uh, we can never, or, you know what I mean. Why we tell them what it is? It's the diving bird and they dive for fish and then they get up on the piers and they'll like stretch their wings out, which is what this one's doing and get their wings dry. And it is a 4x6 mounted on a 5x7 that can drop right into a frame. So, um, and the opening bid on this one is $60. And this is a female wood duck. And it's an ACEO card for 20 bucks. A little sparrow, another ACEO card for 20 bucks. Opening bid, 
Swallowtail Butterfly, another ACEO card, 20 bucks opening bid. And we have the Squirrels, which is a, um, a 4x6 matted to a 5x7 as well. And opening bid is 60 bucks. Don't bark at the cat. She'll get you. She'll get you. And we have I Told You So, which is an ACEO card in color pencil. So opening bid at 20 bucks. And that's what we have right now. And let me get back over here. Comorant. Yes, I don't know why I can never, like, get it stuck in my head. Hang on a sec, because i got to check my messages here, because I just got dinged. So the the female wood duck is going to be a giveaway, and we could actually do it now. You guys want to do a giveaway? You haven't had oh that sucks not to have internet. Um, so I'm going to do a giveaway on the female wood duck, the little ACEO card, and let me pull up my my um random number generator random oh shoot i got my fingers on the wrong keys but there it is random number generator and yway knows the drill i'm sure he's probably posting it as we speak why is that not working Okay. Why is my number seven not working? Well, we're gonna do one to why none of my none of my numbers are working. What the heck? Okay. This is irritating. Hang on. Let me pound on my keyboard for a minute. Okay. And let's try this again. Oh, there we go. Now it's working. Okay. See, I, I know how to fix things. I'm I'm very techno savvy here. Okay, I did it. Yay. Okay, hang on, I'll go back to my my screen here. Okay. Wrong screen. Okay. Rules. Why has got them there? Pick a number one to seventy five closest without going over wins the card. And I'm gonna type start right now. S T A R T start. There we go. Everybody put in your number. Yeah, I forgot I have I'm on top chat instead of live chat, so um so you mods are gonna have to pay attention to and go back and check numbers when we're done here. Which shouldn't take too long because we only have like 10 people watching now. Okay, so we got 37, 66, 56, 15, 59, 20, 37, 69. Hi, Bluefish. I got a package. I don't know if I sent it to you or if it's in the next batch going out. I have a, I had to divide the batches in half. But 
I know you got one coming. You went with your IQ. <laughs> okay. Grasshopper, you throw out a number two. I know why. In the meantime, if anybody sees, um, speaking of sending stuff out, Big Steve and Glass Box Creations, I don't have his address. I need him to email me his address. So if anybody sees him, I can't send out the card that he got without his address. Number 75. It'd be funny if it if it falls on 75. Okay, does everybody have a number out? Because I'm gonna type stop. Stoppers. Do you think for it to catch up here? Oh, dang it. Now my mouse doesn't want to work right. I'm not going to slam my mouse around though. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to do stop. And then we are going to go. Let's blow that up. We need to go over to the random number generator. Come on. Work, mouse, work. Share screen. We don't know yet. I got to share the random number generator. And we got to do a drum roll, which is, and then we hit generate number 61. So whoever is closest to 61 without, without going over wins the card. So, mods, tell me who came the closest. Ah, Canesto Valley Cichlids won. So, what you need to do is send me your mailing address to my email, which, of course, Grasshopper has already thrown up there. So, send me your mailing address mailing address like slow mail and your best bet is to um, copy and paste it because if you don't spell my name exactly right it will not go through and you have one the little the little card of the um, female wood duck Yeah, the spelling's a little bit weird. Actually, the story that I was told growing up is that my grandfather's family immigrated from Ireland. There was 11 kids in the family. Yeah, you can do that too. Yeah, you sure can. Um. There was 11 kids in the family, and they changed their name when they got here because they were, like, hiding from somebody in Ireland. So, anyway, that was the name. So, if you ever meet anybody with, named Early Wine with a spelling like that, they are distant cousins or second cousins or something or other, because, like I say, my... 
my grandfather was the youngest of 11 kids. So anyway, that's that. So now what do you guys want to hear a story about? Wasn't the new wine or the early wine non-alcoholic? I have no idea. <laughs> and I don't know what their name was before they changed it either. <laughs> and I have never met Bob in person. I have just talked to him online like everybody else. That's the beauty of the last name. It's it's good for my art because it's it's like you aren't going to see too many others. In fact, my oldest daughter, whose last name is actually Nelson, does art, and she uses the early wine name because you know Nelson, you know, <laughs> too many Nelsons around. Okay, Cox is an Irish name, awesome. I was told when I was younger, I uh, met a guy one time and he told me that, um, he, he said, you're Irish, aren't you? And I said, yeah, how'd you know? And he said, because um, you have Irish eyes, which I think is, that's because they kind of droop in the corners a little bit. I'm getting old, so I got a lot of wrinkles now, but they've always like had a little slight droop in corners. That's a mouthful of names, cat. I have like really reddish hair and um, one of my daughters ended up with like really, really red head. Your mom needs to marry less than the next life. <laughs> uh, I can relate to that. I don't know. My um, daughter Jessica did a, a DNA thing, and there is Irish in there, but you know, she was saying most of it seems to be Norwegian. I was like, Yeah, your dad's whole family was Norwegian. That's where that comes from. <laughs> <coughs> Yeah, obviously I'm I'm like gray now too. I used to have like like um, brunette hair, but in the sun, when I stepped in the sunlight, it looked like really red, red highlights. But now it's just gray. Okay, I could tell another story, then we could go ahead and close off the stream if you guys want to. Or we could hang out and talk for a while, it's up to you guys. But I'm up here by myself, so I'm sure I'm like boring.
I could tell you a couple stories about Texas or I don't know. Being gray is awesome. It shows you've been places and kicked butt. Yeah, I never thought I'd live this long, so, but I have, so there you go. I'm going to be 69 years old in a couple months. Of my wildlife watching, I've done a lot of wildlife watching. I got one Bigfoot story, or one and a half, that I could tell you about. Or I could tell you about when I lived in a haunted house. So, yeah, I would. I used to work in um, Cheyenne, which is about from my house to where I worked. It's about a fifty-mile drive on the on the freeway. But um, winter time, it's hell absolute hell that freeway because it goes let's see laramie is at um 7165 feet above sea level but you go up to get the cheyenne you go up this on the summit which sits at about 8,000 feet and then it's a slow drop to cheyenne or if you're coming back from cheyenne it's a slow climb all the way Where were you in Texas? I was in a little town called Tioga, which is north of Dallas. And at that time, I had a population of about 600 people. I know I've lived in, I grew up in Oregon. I was born in California, grew up in Oregon. And I've lived in Oregon, Washington, California. Texas, Cape Cod, Massachusetts, and Montana, Colorado, and Wyoming. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so, what was I talking about? Oh, the Bigfoot. I didn't grow up in California. I was born in Inglewood, though, which is a very nasty now suburb of Los Angeles. But I grew up in or I, we moved up to Oregon when I was like a year old. So, oh, okay. So you know where Tioga is? Cool. Okay, so the Bigfoot. So I worked in Cheyenne and I worked in the deli. And my shift was um, two thirty to um, eleven o'clock at night. But a lot of times I didn't get out of there till like midnight or past midnight. So it was winter time. And I got off about midnight. And I started driving home on the freeway. And um, it was snowing really hard. And a truck, semi truck, almost ran me off the road because it passed me, it flew by me like I was standing still half in my lane so I had to take the shoulder to avoid getting sideswiped by the semi truck and I decided well this is bullshit I'm going to take the back road home the back road you turn off a little ways out of Cheyenne and then it's about half of it is like rural area with farms and stuff and then the other half of it is national forest with absolutely nothing so I took the back road home and right after I turned off, because I always, I always, I had it on my phone, I always checked the, the road conditions. And right after I turned off, they closed the freeway. But the back road wasn't closed yet. So I kept going. And I got up to where the, the National Forest started. And that's where all the tire tracks ended. And it was like, it had drifted, so it was anywhere between like six inches to a couple feet deep of snow. And it was like, it had the snow had slowed down to where I could see because the drive that far 
had been absolutely miserable where I couldn't see for shit because the snow was coming down so hard. But I got out, got out into the National Forest. And, of course, in the National Forest, there's absolutely no houses or anything. And there was no tire tracks, so I was the only person on the road there. And they clo when they closed the back road, they closed it right where the National Forest started. So I was going to make it home because I was, I was on that road. But there's no tire tracks, and the snow was fairly deep, so I, like, locked my truck into um, four-wheel drive and I had it in low gear so I was only going like 20 miles an hour so it was a slow trip home but um and by that time it was like one o'clock in the morning and I was coming down off of a hill and the, the back road kind of winds around a bit and I was kind of coming down and curving and like curving and dropping down at the same time so as I came around this one curve and I was headed downhill but as I came around the curve, my headlights shone down onto the road down below where it straightened out again at the bottom of the hill. And there was a fucking Bigfoot standing there. And I'm not kidding. There was a Bigfoot standing there. And um, scared the shit out of me because I couldn't speed up because I was in four-wheel drive low. And going through deep snow, I couldn't stop because if I stopped, I was going to get stuck. I couldn't back up in the snow because same thing. There's just no way in hell the truck was going to back up in the, that deep of snow. So I had no choice but to just keep going. So I just made sure that my doors were locked, although it did cross my mind that, you know, it could just rip my doors off. Yet he doesn't mind. I know, huh? <laughs> so anyway, I got down to the bottom where he had been and he had, he was gone. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. So um, I kept going really slow and just past where he had been, there was like half a dozen deer in the middle of the road. And I'm kind of thinking when I look back on it that maybe that's why he was there. He might have been after those deer. But when I came to them, they did absolutely did not want to move or anything. They just wanted to stand in the middle of the road. So I finally got them to move and kept going. And I made it home. And this is going to sound really strange, but I did not see the face at all. It had its back to me. It was gray and probably about eight feet tall and kind of a dark gray color. But I did not see the face. So I don't know what. There's so many people see so many different kinds of faces on them. A lot depending upon what part of the country you're from or where you see it, like the ones in, in Oregon and Washington are different than the ones in Texas and da 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 you know they're all different but I didn't see its face so I don't know but it was gone when I got down the bottom of the hill but what was really strange is the next morning yeah it had really square shoulders and no neck no neck and really long long arms but um anyway what was strange about it was next the next morning, I forgot all about it. I just forgot about it. I didn't tell anybody about it. I forgot about it. You'd think I'd remember, but I just kind of like forgot about it until one day about a year or so ago. I was flipping through stuff on the on the internet, and I came across a picture, a drawing that somebody had done of the back of a Bigfoot, and it just like hit me like a sledgehammer the whole memory of that and being so scared and stuff came back so yeah but anyway so that was that that's the time that i saw it and i gotta show you guys i'm gonna show you my shirt da -da -da -da. bigfoot saw me but nobody believes him so that's what happened with that now, there was another time when I can't say that he that he was there, but it was in the same area. And a friend had come to see me, and I took her four-wheel driving out on the back roads and stuff in the National Forest there in the same area where I had seen Bigfoot. And we went on some, like, we were going all over the dirt trails and stuff. But um, we'd come out of this one canyon that was just like a two-track. 
and got up on the main dirt road. And when we got up on the main dirt road, I looked off to the to the right and there was two like park ranger trucks parked there. And the guys were like leaning on the truck and talking. And when they saw me come out of that that um that little dirt track road, they were staring at me like I got the feeling that they thought I was going to pull down and talk to them. And they were like staring at me like with anticipation. And when I kept going, going past where I could turn and go talk to them, they obviously looked really relieved. And I thought, wow, that's kind of strange. And then I got a little bit further down the road and there was a group of people, um, a group of trucks where everybody was stopped and a big group of people stopped and talking. And they all stopped talking and turned and stared at me driving by too. So that was kind of like, it was odd. And it just makes me wonder if somebody saw something. And that's why everybody was like staring at me. But that's just a thought. That's just a thought. And then when I got back up to the paved road, <laughs> this was kind of funny. I got back up to the paved road and I was like getting ready to pull out on the road and I shifted, shifted down and I let, let the clutch out too fast and killed my truck. And then it wouldn't start again. It just absolutely would not do anything. It was like totally dead. So I was like, son of a bitch. So I had to call for a tow truck and thank goodness I was close to the main road, but I told him where I was and stuff and called for a tow truck. So he was coming out to get me. So we finally saw the tow truck coming and he saw me and I had backed down, down off the main road off the, you know, it was on this dirt road. So he pulled down on the dirt road and then he like went past me to turn around so he could come, you know, and have the truck in the right direction to like scoop me up onto the truck. And he went past me and then tried to do like a jog turnaround thing. And he got the tow truck stuck. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> we were, I was laughing. But he finally got it unstuck. And he told me to my mechanics, which I had um, AAA, so I didn't have to pay for the towing. And he towed my truck to the mechanic. And I left it there. And... um told him that I'd, I'd call the next day and see how it was going. Well, my mechanic actually drove my truck home for me about an hour later. He had his wife follow him and he drove my truck to my house. And he told me that it was just the loose wire when I was out for wheeling. I'd knocked the wire loose and he didn't even charge me anything. And he delivered my truck to me too. So that he's a pretty awesome mechanic, I think. Yes, Sarah has my only Bigfoot drawing, which I drew what I remembered of seeing the Bigfoot. So it's from the back and stuff, and it's a Bigfoot butt. So that is what happened with that. So I've had some people that obviously, I've told this story before, and some people obviously thought I was out of my mind. So I don't tell it all the time. But yes, I did see a Bigfoot. I most definitely did see a big Bigfoot. And I also most definitely did live in a haunted house for about a year. Did Biggie have back? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I can't tell you what else he had because he was facing away from me. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a lot of people who have. But when I was growing up, it wasn't talked about at all. I mean, if you said that you saw a flying saucer or you, if you saw Bigfoot, people thought that you were nuts. So nobody ever said anything. But I know... Um, when I was little, like preschool age, we lived way up in the hills above Rainier, Oregon. And if you've listened to um, 
stories and stuff. There are quite a few stories in that area about Bigfoot. I like. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of stories about Bigfoot in that area. It's like heavy woods, and we lived way up in the hills. And um, my dad had been working for um, a feed store. And he had was delivering bags of feed, like, and he had a couple hundred pounds on each shoulder and walked into this lady's barn to deliver her, put her feed in the barn. And the floor broke and caved in. And he dropped about three feet and totally messed up his back. Like, totally messed up his back. And um, he ended up having back surgery. So he was out of work for a while. So we lived way up in the hills and my mom had a, a big garden and my dad poached deer and stuff and there was um there was two game wardens in the area and one was an older guy and he knew damn good and well that my dad was poaching and he never said anything about it because there was four of us kids and and dad wasn't working so okay cat so he just like looked the other way and the other one was a young guy that was constantly trying to catch my dad. He never did catch him, but he was always trying to catch him. So, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, a lot of people like brown on poaching, but really, we, he kind of had to. But anyway, we lived in Rainier. And suddenly, we moved to St. Helens in the middle of town. And my dad never went fishing again. He had a, like a dozen fishing poles and he never went fishing again and he never went hunting. He had all kinds of, of hunting rifles and stuff, but he never went hunting again and he never stepped foot into the woods again. So you make of it what you will, but I have my own ideas on what happened. Yeah, we, uh, exactly. You do what you have to do to feed your families. And this was like 50 some, 50 some years ago, 60 years ago. So, yeah, 65 years ago. So, it is what it is. Oh, I don't even want to. I hope I never, ever, ever see one of them. Never want to see a dog man. I do believe there's enough. I've heard enough stories about people that have seen them, so I do believe that they are real. But I personally don't ever, ever want to see one. You can never unsee your encounter. It changes everything. Yeah. And it was the same thing with living in the haunted house. It was like um, I was totally a skeptic. I enjoyed watching, like, ghost hunters and stuff when they were on TV, but I didn't really believe it. But I moved to the, this house in um, Montana and I thought I was, I thought I was getting old and senile because the first thing that happened was like stuff would get moved all the time. And I thought I was putting stuff away in like weird, weird places. Like, like my daughter and I rode our bikes over to the convenience store got a few things and got back and i had to go to the bathroom when we walked in the door so i'd set my my um debit card on the table and run back to the bathroom exactly mike that's what i had to do is go pee <laughs> so <laughs> oh my god grasshopper okay so i had to go pee so um i set my debit card on the table and when i got out of the bathroom it was gone and we looked everywhere and I could not find it. And the next morning, I was getting some uh, plate out of the china cabinet and it was in the china cabinet. I was like, why in the hell did I put it in the china cabinet? I must be like losing my fucking mind. Good night, boots. So that was the first thing that I noticed, but I didn't really think too much of it. And the other thing is that back in the back part of the house by my bedroom, there was a a spare room and I'd made into a computer room and um, 
I started um, playing music every night on the computer all night long. Like I turned the music on, which I never did in my life before, but I'd play music and go to sleep listening to the music. And then one night, I had just climbed into bed and I heard a cat purring and walking across the floor. And my mind just went to Mario, but he was a little kitten then, and, and my daughter kept him locked in her bedroom at night. So, but anyway, I heard him coming. I heard him walking across the floor and he jumped up on the bed purring and walked across the bed and laid on top of my legs, you know, like, and he was heavy. And I like reached down to pet him. And at the same time, I was thinking, wait, Mario's locked in Megan's bedroom. And I reached down and there was nothing there. Like there was no cat, there was nothing. And I flew out of bed and turned on the lights and there was no cat anywhere. And it scared the shit out of me because like if you hear noise, you can explain it away. Or if you hear, um, if you see something, you can like rub your eyes and think it was your imagination. But when you feel something laying on you, you can't explain that away. So it did. It scared me. So I, for about three nights, I slept with the lights on. And then I was like, well, this is really stupid. This is my house and I'm not going to be scared of a cat. And, but every, almost every night I'd hear that cat like playing in the bedroom, like running across the floor. And I'd hear it in the bathroom next to the, next to my bedroom. I'd hear it jump up on the counter. Cause if you've had a cat, you know, the sound of a cat jumping up on a counter and I'd hear it jump up on the bathroom counter. And a lot of mornings I'd wake up and it would be like purr. They'd be like purring on the pillow next to me. And when I turned my head, there was nothing there. So yeah, I had a cat. So I was like, okay, well then, um, once I acknowledged the fact that I had a cat, a ghost cat then my mind opened up a little bit more and I started noticing other stuff <laughs> like stuff moving in the kitchen on its own and be sitting at the kitchen table and look down the hall and see like shadows like shadow people moving down the hall <laughs> one night I was it was like 11 o'clock at night and Megan had gone to bed and down the hallway I had like um, some of my art hanging up all the way down the hallway like framed drawings with glass over them and one night I was sitting at the kitchen table and I was looking down the hallway and I saw the shadow of a head and shoulders going from reflection to reflection on those picture frames all the way down the hall and yeah it kind of scared me a bit <laughs> Oh, I've had, I had, I was standing at the kitchen sink one time washing the dishes and I was home alone. Megan was at school and one of the kitchen chairs slid backwards about three feet and hit me in the middle of my back, which kind of scared me just a bit. I had it one time and it was in that house when I was living in that house. And it was like, I, I felt like something was holding my legs down in bed. And when I looked up, there was like, instead of the white ceiling, there was this huge black area on the ceiling. And when I could finally yell, which took a few minutes before I could even yell, I yelled for my son because he was staying with me at the time. And he came running and as soon as he flipped the light on, I could move again and the shadow disappeared. That's the only time I've ever had that. And I hope I never see anything like that again, because that was very scary. Yes. And um, when my son was staying with me, he was walking down the hallway one time and so to go to the bathroom. He was walking down the hallway for the bathroom and something grabbed his shoulder and he screamed. And another time, him and his now wife had stopped to visit. And she they had gone out and she was wearing like a long lace skirt. 
and Mario was a young kitten then. And he got on, she was sitting in the, at the kitchen table and he got underneath of her skirt and was like batting at her lace skirt. So my son scooped him up and took him to my daughter's bedroom because she was staying the night with a friend. So she wasn't there. And he was going to throw her in my daughter's bedroom. And um, when he reached for the doorknob, the doorknob turned the opposite way by itself of what he was going to turn. You know, he was reaching for it. And the doorknob turned <laughs> by itself. <laughs> so, yeah, that was another thing that happened. And there was constantly stuff moving out of the kitchen. Like, okay, so in the kitchen... There was like a poltergeist activity all the time. Like you'd get up in the morning and every single cupboard, all the upper ones and all the lower ones, all of them would be standing wide open. One time I had just gone to bed and one of the cupboard doors slammed violently shut. And both me and my daughter jumped up out of bed and ran to the hallway. And we were like, what the hell was that? I said, it sounded like a cupboard door. But from the hallway, you had to pass through the living room to get to the kitchen light. There was no lights, light switches in the living room. So I told my daughter to go turn on the kitchen light. And she said, hell no, you go do it. And I was like, hell no, we're just going to go back to bed. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so but stuff got moved all the time. Like one time my son and I were packing cigarettes. We were sitting at the kitchen table packing cigarettes. And we packed a bunch of them and stopped and smoked a cigarette and visited. And then I went to pack some more cigarettes. And my little packing thing, this little thing that you pack the cigarettes with, was gone. So we couldn't find it on the table anywhere. Neither one of us had stood up at all. And we ended up finding it on the kitchen counter behind the canisters. So like how it got there from us sitting at the kitchen table and not getting up from the table is your guess is as good as mine. And another time my son and I were in the living room. I could tell all kinds of stories about what stuff that happened, but we were sitting in the living room and my son goes, mom, and he points to the kitchen table and the kitchen table. The only thing on the kitchen table was the salt and pepper shakers. And the salt shaker, we looked over and the, pretend this is a salt shaker. It was like tipped up on its side like that and just hanging there. And we watched it for a minute and then pretty soon it tipped back down and kind of rocked back and forth and settled down and stopped. So, yeah. So, oh, thanks. Thanks, Grasshopper. Make fun of me. Go ahead. Make fun of me. I know there's at least a few people in here that think I'm crazy that don't believe in ghosts and think I'm out of my mind, but yeah. So anyway, the kitchen had a poltergeist. The living room, not much happened in the living room, except it just felt creepy. And a, a couple times I saw like a man walking through the living room. I actually saw a man walking through the living room. The hallway, a couple times, there was something bad in the hallway. It's like, um, it felt sometimes you'd walk through the hallway at night and it felt like the air was so thick, like you were swimming or something. And there was just, there was something not good in the hallway. And then not much ever happened in Megan's room, but my room was at the end of the house. And I had the cat there. And the cat would be in my room and the bathroom and the computer room. So, yeah. But the reason that I listen, list, when Tucker moved in with me to, for a while, um, I had to turn the music off. That I used to play music at night. And the reason that I, I figured out the reason that I played the music at night was because the kitchen was really noisy at night. <laughs> So that was my way of subconsciously not wanting to hear the noise coming out of the kitchen. And Tucker slept on the couch, which was like a, a hide-a-bed. So when he stayed with me, he slept on the couch. 
which the back of the couch faced the kitchen. It was kind of like dividing the two rooms. And he didn't like it because he said it was like, you'd hear boots walking around and you'd hear, which I, I have heard myself, you'd hear boots walking around in the kitchen and you'd hear um, stuff rattling in the cupboards, like glasses rattling and the plates rattling in the cupboards. And um, one time he was laying in bed and he heard someone say hello, like a questioning type of hello, is anybody there? So yeah, the kitchen was noisy at night and the cupboards would open and then slam shut and stuff would move off the counters into the sink. And um, oh, the kitchen air at Poltergeist also included the front porch, which was right off the kitchen because there was a couple times that things would disappear off the porch while we were sitting there and we'd find them in the kitchen. So yeah. So anyway, I know everybody thinks I'm crazy, but I could sit here like for half the night telling stories about stuff, different stuff that happened in that house. I have no idea where these ghosts were from, but um, one time my daughter Courtney came to get me to go to town with her. And... Um, she pulled into the carport, and from the carport, you look, you could look up a little ways at the li two living room windows. And I got that we visited for a while, and I went out and I locked the doors, and we got in the car, and she just turned the car on, and we both looked up and watched a man walk past both kitchen windows, and we both saw him. We didn't say anything. She, we just looked at each other and she looked at me and she says, are you ready to go? And I said, yep. <laughs> and we pulled out and we got about halfway into Billings and she said, you saw that, didn't you? And I said, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> so, yeah. The last night that I was there, I was like, had... Some boxes packed, the last of the boxes packed in the kitchen. And I was scooping out fish out of the fish tank and dropping them into a five-gallon bucket. Hi, Andrew. So I was like scooping fish out with the fish net and dropping them in the bucket, you know, like leaning down, put them in the bucket of water. And as I was doing that, I could hear Mario in the kitchen like playing bat and stuff around and making the dishes and the boxes rattle and stuff. And I could hear him playing in the kitchen and I was almost done. And I scooped out some fish and I dropped them in the bucket. And as I did, I like looked down the hallway and I saw Mario coming out of my bedroom, stretching like he just woke up. And I was like, okay, so what the hell is behind me in the kitchen? <laughs> So there. Oh, yeah. Andrew is going to go to the Nebraska Bigfoot Conference. And I am totally jealous. And I want to hear all about it and hopefully see some video when he gets back. I believe that. I believe that. He says, my mom had the ability to see ghosts. I've seen him before. I don't know if it was an ability or a curse. Since I left that house, I've, I've never seen anything. It's like, I was really worried when I moved that something was going to follow me, but nothing did. And I have not had any more ghost experiences since I left that house. Just Bigfoot experiences. So, that's part of the stuff that I could tell you about that happened at that house. I could say I could sit here and tell you stories all night because it was fairly active all the time. Not, and this is something that I've seen so much that people think that, you know, you have to worry about ghosts at night, but I saw a lot of stuff during the day, like in the middle of the day. Oh, the Ohio Bigfoot Conference. Are you going to go?
they seem to stay at the house they live in yeah I think that um, from different shows and stuff I've watched where they need to get energy and a lot of people or some people believe that they get they can get energy from running water well I live down this little side road and right across the road from me was the canal that ran pretty dang strong so um, I'm I think that that might be one of the reasons I had so much happening all the time that's funny TJ <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people, I think maybe because it's in the dark, you can't see as well, so it scares people more. But a lot of people seem to think that you have to worry about activity at night. But there's just as much activity during the day. Stuff happens during the day a lot. So I'm going to show my art one more time if anybody's interested. Or I'll ask you guys, if anybody is anybody interested in seeing this stuff one more time? What is available? Yes, okay. I will show my art one more time. And okay. This is a colored pencil ACEO card, which is two and a half. It's the size of a baseball card, and it comes in like a hard plastic. Like I send them in a hard plastic sleeve, so they are very well protected. And the opening bid on the cards is twenty bucks. And this one is called I Told You So. And this is a squirrel and it's a four by six matted to go into a five by seven frame. And the opening bid on, on that size is $60. And it's colored pencil with watercolor in the background. And that's really a bad picture of it. I should get a better one. And this is another ACEO card, so opening bid is 20 bucks, and it's a swallowtail colored pencil. And this is another card, and it's a little sparrow, so 20 bucks opening bid. And that is a female um, wood duck, which I just gave away tonight, so that one is no longer available. And this one is a 4x6, or a little bit bigger than 4x6, and I'm going to mat it. I don't have it matted yet, but it's going to go on to a 5x7, so it can drop into a 5x7 frame. And the opening bid would be 60 bucks on it. And that is a buffalo, and it's colored pencil on papyrus paper. And the opening bid on it is 145 It's an 8x10 matted to 11 by 14 and that is another flutter by a blue flutter by and it's a card so it's 20 bucks opening bid and that is what I have available tonight oh I also have one that I don't have a photograph of yet that I'll show you real quick which is a bumblebee butt and I'll take a photograph of it tomorrow so we can see it better I um it's one town I lived in in eastern Washington there was a old cafe that hadn't been been used for a while and this Chinese couple bought it and we're going to open up a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> and um, 
some fried legs, fried legs and ham. But anyway, um, they were cleaning up the restaurant and getting it ready to open. And the guy was sitting in a chair and something grabbed his leg and pulled him out of the chair. And he ran out of the, there and they locked it up and they never went back and opened up the restaurant. It sat empty again. It's a bee butt because you know that I like butt drawings. So I've done elk butt and buffalo butt and all kinds of butt. Now I've done a bee butt. We need a Mario's butt. <laughs> So, Andrew, I bet, has a ton of stories, and one night we need to get him up here to tell us about stuff that he's seen driving. Have you, see, have you seen um, ghost activity too, Andrew, or just like cryptids and stuff? By the way, Andrew, we're supposed to get two inches of snow here tomorrow. Hopefully they're wrong, but it's going to be damn cold anyway. <laughs> It was 70 degrees a couple nights ago, and now it's, like, going to snow tomorrow. Yep, we need to get Andrew up here one night. He could come up here right now if he wanted to, but I don't know where he's doing and where he's at and what he's doing. Or maybe he could come up after the conference and tell us all about the conference. That is a plan. You want to do that, Andrew? I had um, my daughter-in-law sage the house that I was living in that was haunted. And um, after the incident where the door handle turned by itself when Tucker went to open the door, they came back two days later and um, my daughter-in-law staged the house and said some prayers and stuff. And it worked for a while. It was nothing for about a month, and I was kind of sad because I kind of had gotten used to the cat, and I kind of liked it. But um, there was nothing for about a month, and then slowly everything started coming back again. And like I say, by the time two months had passed, everything was happening. All I mean, everything was back, so... Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> What goes zub zub, a bee flying backwards? You Oh, let's plan on it, Andrew. Let's plan on it. Let me know what day the, um, you can send me a message on my channel somewhere on one of the videos or something. Send a message and let me know what day the conference will be over and what and we'll just, I'll just do a, a live stream with this. It doesn't matter what night it is. We'll just do it. Whatever night works for you. I think a fly just went past the camera. It was like 70 degrees a couple days ago and I opened up the doors and stuff. And now I've been like killing flies. <laughs> yeah, he got rid of all the evil spirits, so he woke up outside. I always felt like the cat was protecting me and I know this sounds stupid, and I have absolutely no proof. And this is going to sound ridiculous to everybody. But I always felt like the cat was protecting me from whatever was in the hallway. Because the cat was always in my room, and that thing never came from the hallway into my room. Except there were that one night when, when I think that was during the time when everything started coming back, when I had the the episode where I couldn't move, the sleep paralysis thing. 
It's Friday and Saturday next week. Okay, well, right after it's over, let me know. We could, I usually stream on Sunday nights. We could plan on Sunday night if you want to, like, do it then. You want to do it next Sunday night, like a week from this coming Sunday? Yeah, like I say, Andrew, I don't have any proof, but I just always had the feeling that, that that cat was, the ghost cat was protecting me from from whatever was in the hallway. Good night, John. Actually, it's like three minutes till 11, so I'm, four, well, four minutes and I will have been streaming for two hours, so we'll go ahead and call it a night here in a couple minutes. So this is the last chance if anybody wants to bid on any of the art they've shown tonight. If not, it'll be available next time I stream, which will be in a couple days. I'll definitely stream on Sunday night, but I, I might do Friday night too. So, yeah, I think a week from Sunday we should have Andrew on. What do you guys think? Yes, yes, right? So, Andrew, you need to get a hold of me, and um, we'll set it up, and we'll do, like, um, I'll send you, like, we'll do, like, a trial unpublished, stream yard to make sure that you can get on and everything and check that all out and then we'll do plan on doing a stream maybe next a week from sunday and yeah we'll ask andrew how the conference went and ask him about some of his experiences which i've been wanting to do and we can like go for more than two hours if we need to, it would be fun. Okay, I'll show my art one more time and then we'll like give it a minute. If nobody bids on anything, we'll call it a night and I'll stream again in a couple days. So, we'll flip through my art one more time. Uh oh, I must have shut it off. Hang on. Pull it back up again. Oh, there we go. Okay, so hang on. Let's do this again. There we go. This is an ACEO card, which is the size of a baseball card, and I ship them in a hard plastic sleeve to protect them. So they're kind of indestructible. And um, the opening bid on them is 20 bucks, and this is colored pencil on handmade bark paper. This is a blue butterfly. And this is a buffalo, and he is 8 by 10 matted to an 11 by 14, and the opening bid on it is 145. And it is colored pencil on a piece of papyrus paper. And this one is 4 by 6 inches colored pencil on handmade bark paper. And the opening bid on this size, and, oh, and it's going to be matted to a 5 by 7 so it can drop into a 5 by 7 ready-made frame. And the opening bid on this size is 60 bucks.
And this one was our giveaway tonight, so it is unavailable, but it's a female wood duck. And this one is a little sparrow, and it's an ACEO card. So the opening bid on it is 20 bucks in this colored pencil on handmade bark paper. And this one is another ACEO card, and it's um, 20 bucks colored pencil on handmade bark paper. And this one is a squirrel, and it's four by six. And the background is watercolor, and the squirrel itself is colored pencil. And it is matted to go into a five by seven frame. And opening bid on it is 60 bucks. And this one is I Told You So. And it's an ACEO card. Opening bid is 20 bucks, and it's colored pencil on handmade bark paper. So that's what I have. In addition, I also have one card that I have not. It's an ACEO card that I have not taken a photograph of yet. And it is a bee butt. So the only bit on it is also 20 bucks. So that's what I have available. Michigan, yep, the Michigan Dogman. Kind of a famous area for dogmen. And I think Texas has a lot of them. And I've heard of them in Wyoming, like especially um, on the Indian Reservation um, west of here in the desert area. So, yeah. Everybody's talking about dogmen now, so I don't want to go yet because I want to see what everybody has to say. <laughs> uh, well, I think shapeshifters, yeah, shapeshifters are um, like witchcraft, like native witchcraft and I think there is like Navajo and in that area okay I'm gonna call it a night so everybody thanks for coming in and have a great night and watch for another stream because I have lots of time on my stream yard that I might as well use some of it because I missed two whole weeks and no, no streams because I was feeling so crappy. Oh, Bray Road, that's cool. Good night, everybody. Night, guys. Thanks for coming in.